So let's end with this last part. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Multiple Dimensions, Part 33, and Roll. In today's episode, we had listened to all the work to date, and we had improvisations one, improvisation two, three, four, and it felt like they were having very different kinds of emotional impacts on us. So we thought, can we extend our idea of multiple dimensions to themes? And so this is our model. We're saying one dimension is cognitive energy. Does something sound familiar? Does it sound exotic? Um, da 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 dum da 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 dum would be exotic, and then da 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 would be familiar. Then what about emotional energy? Is it a comforting song, or is it a, a disturbing song? Da 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 and then comforting song insert you know happy birthday to you like that so what if we considered that to be a dimension and what if we considered that to be another dimension and then you know we're already familiar with tempos and rhythms and simple and syncopated figures but now we thought we'd work with that so one of the first things we did is we went to all those uh, three note figures that we had been generating those three note figures, this thing, remember these, they were diddle dit diddle dit diddle dit. And we went through and assigned familiarity, exoticness, comfortingness, or disturbingness to them. So we went through and in this new work area, uh, all those figures have now been assigned. For example, this one we think is a familiar, whereas this one is exotic. And then uh, this one is comforting. And then uh, disturbing, this one would say is disturbing. So it's a bit subjective, yet we found that we were able to take all of those figures, and there were a bunch of them. What We had 13, I think, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and sort them into, into ranges of cognitive, familiar, and exotic, and or emotional, comforting, and disturbing. And if you think about it, that kind of makes sense for us. It does. Uh, a lot of Bach's work, Johann Bach, um, they say, oh, it's so precise, it's, you know, it's got all those um, Brandenburg concertos and things like that. It's very rigorous and mathematical, and it pleases our cognitive brain. Yet, some of the work is ex dense, expressively emotional. <laughs> or air on a G string, or, you know, insert your favorite song there. And so much so that a lot of progressive rock music uses uh, Bach and, and type of stuff. So he clearly had a cognitive dimension and he had an emotional direction. And we're no longer using crisscross to represent multiple dimensions. We're using um, vertical parallel scales. Uh, in this case, um, this is going across that way, and then this is going across that way, because we have all these other dimensions that we're going to come back to later on. So that's kind of the background for it. So we were able to do that. And then we thought, well, let's go back to improvisation one, two, three, and four, and let's similarly extract the figures from them, which we did, and gave each one of them a label. Is it cognitive exotic? Is it uh, is it emotionally comforting? Uh, is it cognitively familiar? And so forth. And um, we're going to play that for you. So that took a while. <laughs> and it was pleasing, and it was frustrating, and it was pleasing, and it was frustrating. 
and it really felt like we're forcing ourselves to work just with figures we really it's it seemed a bit uncomfortable to just you know why don't we just throw some harmony on it it sounds cool i mean you heard us do improvisation four the other day it was sounded so cool with the little chords thrown on there the trick is we want something that, that lasts longer than 30 seconds. And some of the times our improvisations sound really cool, but they're really, really short. And we don't quite know where to go with it. And so we know from previous experience that you gotta develop the material, develop the material, kind of build up a heap of stuff and then start pulling from it. And then, and then you're in good shape. And because we wanna have multiple themes, we'd really like to have at least four identifiable themes uh, which may be these four thingies, or there may be two familiar themes and one disturbing and two exotic and five, we don't know. But um, we basically spent the bulk of the stream today to get these sorted into what we could label as exotic, etc. So what we're going to do is play these for you now. And here we go. So that concludes today's stream. What we notice in terms of subtleties about all this is that sometimes the same figure, for example, um, the note that one of those figures ends on 
determines its final feel. If it's a ending on an up to up A, it could feel upbeat. Otherwise, it might feel downbeat. Uh, sometimes the same figure repeated gives a different feel than when it stands alone. So, hopefully, the new dimension of figure extending that we are doing will pay off in whole new things to sound good. We think it will. Um, and for now, we just want to let it be. Just keep doing that. Let it settle. Well, we made a listening copy of this. And, uh, and then keep moving forward. Keep, keep moving forward. So thank you, uh, well, our ideas for next time. And also, before we go, uh, thank you to the Nuts Network and Reiska Trip uh, 000000 for your comments and during the stream. Um, we think we want to do a trial animation next time to get some more ideas. And we're starting to think about getting that spatial audio. What if, what if just like the figures go up and down, we could deliberately make the, the music tracks go up and down, uh, somehow coordinated with them. So we'll see, we'll see how that turns out. And, and you come see how that turns out. Do come back to the next stream. Do take care and do keep on streaming.